Good morning traders. Today is Monday at 11.24 a.m. and the markets are closed again today. So kind of just looking at different charts and giving you some ideas of stocks and commodities going into the new year. It's just an extra day for us to get prepared and finish this first week of 2012 out strong. It's going to be a big year. I have a lot of goals. One of my uh, goals is 100,000 profit after taxes and deductions. So I hope you guys all have goals and it's, it's very important not only to have a yearly goal but also to have daily, weekly, and monthly goals. All right, with that aside, the first thing I'm gonna look at is crude oil. We've been trading right around the $100 level over the past week. Currently, we closed at 99.06. I think that going into 2012, crude oil is going to definitely move higher. And I wouldn't be surprised if we tested the 113.46 in the next three months. I'm not making any predictions. These are just my point of view. And I wouldn't recommend you to trade anything off of what I say. Uh, do your own research. <clears throat> but looking back a little longer term, five years to be exact, I'm looking at crude. And we are up 86% over the last five years. Besides this little blip that we had when the financial crisis came in 2008, which was, not to mention, an amazing buy, we have continued to trend up. And if we do bust out of this high right here at 113.46, that will put us up roughly 115% in the last five years. That's an amazing return. You can't find an investment in any other commodity like that besides gold and a few other ones that I'm not mentioning right now. So if we get back up to 147.27, that's going to be about 180%. I'm, this is a little off topic, but it kind of runs in tandem with the markets because when they pass bills in the Senate, it reflects us. Just looking back from last year, Obama lent $500 million to Solyndra, and who knows, it was probably more than that that we lost out on. The company went bankrupt. He lent another $500 billion to a company that makes cars in Finland. He is throwing this money around like it's monopoly money, and essentially it is monopoly money, but the, the carelessness that this administration has with our money and our kids' kids' money the notion that the American people aren't going to stand up and do anything about it is very, very clear because we haven't yet. You know, the tea parties were good last year, but they, they just weren't enough. And regardless of what my opinion is on Occupy Wall Street, why were they in New York protesting? Why weren't they in Washington? Washington passes these bills. Washington's the ones that give the bailout to the people on Wall Street. Goldman Sachs is in cahoots along with JP Morgan and a number of other banks, but we need to focus on where the problem is, and it's in Washington, not New York. And they're, you know, these protesters are giving us traders, even if you're a home trader, a bad rap. And I don't agree with it. But, anyways. I think crude oil is going higher into next year. All right, so now we're looking at gold. And when we hit the high of 1923 in gold, we were up 207% over the last five years. Amazing returns. Currently, we're up about 150%. Currently, I am long silver, which I'll show you the chart in just a moment. It's only a short term trade. I'm looking for $29 in silver. And I'm trading that through the SLV calls. All right, looking at gold though for a moment, um, we have this long channel going on from a few months ago, and we were trading in this channel pretty nicely. Every chart technician was watching this, and then we traded out of it a little bit. My guess is that if we break below this low right here, which was 1523.90. That was the monthly low. You might be able to get a little more downside. I'm not sure about how much. Maybe, you know, 10, 15 percent. 
but short term I'm hoping that we could retest this channel at least I'm not too much worried about breaking over it I just want to retest it and then if the bears are still there you'll see another wave that comes down like that and then consolidation and maybe the move lower roughly around 1450 to 1424 here is the silver chart on a daily time frame and silver's up 116 percent and it was up 290 percent as the high of 4982 was approached april of last year this is what's going to be interesting to me looking here on a shorter time frame the last three days yes they were on light volume everything was but we got closes all in the positive and then on the intraday chart we gapped up and we held the gap you see this low right here on the five minute candle this is a level that everyone needs to watch this proves that there were some buyers in here now I I really hope that we don't fade this gap come in in the market in tomorrow's session but if we get below this 2733 I'm gonna cut my long and if we bounce off of it I'm just gonna hold it and like I said $29 is the level that I will sell my full position at next I'm looking at SWHC which is Smith & Wesson and take a look at the buying come through as of December 1st we went from three dollars to 450 and that's huge in a stock like this and a lot of it was on the backs of people are in fear that the government are going to try to take our weapons from us like they did in Nazi Germany. I think that's a definite possibility. I think that there will be some rebel uh, rebellion by the American people. And I think that if the military was sent in to do it and declare martial law, that um, they'd have a difficult time if it was U.S. soldiers trying to take their own people's weapons. Some people will follow the orders, but I think they'll have a harder time. So if that did happen, I think it would be a foreign government, um, like maybe China or something, that would take the weapons. You know, that's just my opinion if it ever did happen. But I, I, I think that, you know, it's going to be more or less, if, if an epidemic does occur this year, this is a little off topic, but it would be maybe an airborne virus, maybe like the swine flu or whatever, and there would probably be forced inoculations and these FEMA camps set up. I, I don't buy into maybe the whole conspiracy of it, but I do think that it's defi a definite possibility that they could force vaccinate people without their will. They could simply pass a law into effect. And a lot of people will take it. You saw when the swan flu came out, that could have been the government just testing to see how easy it was to get the public to take these. Anyways, with that aside, there's an ammunition company. The name doesn't come to me right off the top of my head, but they're linked to the government and they're buying up all the ammo companies. So it will make it harder for people to own ammo. All right, next I'm looking at Sears Holdings, and this company's been around since a long time, and we have went down drastically since this high that we put in back in October around 82.20. Now we're at 31.78. As far as Sears goes, if we get a little more downside, I'd probably take a long in this company. I don't think that we're gonna go below $25 a share without getting some buying pressure bankruptcy for now I think is out of the question even though some of the volatility is pricing it in but like I said a short-term bounce should be in the horizon looking back a little bit over five years we're down 82 percent as of this high we were down around 60 uh, percent in 2680s the level from 2008 that's going to be a major support level but clearly Sears has been underperforming uh, in the last five years based on you know maybe them buying Kmart they merged back in 2005 and we all know that there's no way that Kmart could ever compete with Walmart so short term speaking I am looking for a bounce in Sears coming up very soon next is Netflix and over the last five years, when Netflix was at its high, it was up about 
that's an astronomical return I remember last year it just kept going up nobody would bet against this stock and the people that did couldn't have enough discipline to either cut their losses short or keep adding to their position Whitney Tilson is an example of that and then after the thousand dollar mark that's really when uh, the short started picking up steam and we're up currently 205 percent still very good since the last five years at a nominal return of 250 percent per year but as far as the daily chart goes I think that Netflix will get a pop I think it's gonna have a hard time breaking through 6237 and over the next few months if you have stomach to hold this it, it could go to 50 but I think that you'll eventually get back up to 125 that shouldn't be an issue all right, and the last thing I'm going to look at is the euro. In the past five years, we're actually at 0%. This is where it gets really interesting. And if, if you're a trader, a currency trader, and you're watching this euro, I think that there's going to be a, a nice move coming in the next month for sure. Whether we break below this level and continue down to some other support levels, maybe look around the 2008 lows or we bounce off of it and get back up to 133 I'm going to definitely be trading this and I'll keep you updated alright here's a daily chart of the euro and are we going to break below this 128.88 level and hold or are we going to hold above it are we going to hold this low right here so keep watching that traders hope you enjoyed this video leave me some comments of what you think is going to happen in 2012 do you think that there's going to be a uh, weather disaster or do you think that it's going to be destroyed by the next president that gets into play